ladies and gentlemen welcome to the international webinar on exploring health and ayurvedic perspective organized by iraj webinar in association with iraj on the behalf of entire organization committee i am deepak swai organizing secretary would like to welcome you all for this webinar ladies and gentlemen let me introduce our organization the motto behind this non profit association is to bridge the gap between student professors academics and industrialists from multidiscipline apart from organization various seminars expert talks and conferences we have various highly rated multidisciplinary journals in the field of science engineering tech since our inception we present at various part of the world like new york london australia hong kong dubai bangkok kuala lumpur india etc more than 1 lakh people across the globe are associated with us more than 5 lakh research papers have been presented and published during our journey today i am glad to welcome you all as a member of the fastest growing network for the advancement of science and technology in terms of research and innovation today <coughs> today we are very much fortunate to have an eminent professors and expert who is joining this webinar as an expert speaker and guest professor dr uh, pradnya to sar uh, presently uh, she is working as an md consulting doctor in ev leaf ayurvedic hospital doctor in ev leaf ayurvedic hospital work as ai am bangalore now i would like to welcome our doctor pradnit sir with there to deliver the webinar please ma'am now you can start the speech uh, very good afternoon myself dr pradnit sir with there ayurvedic consultant and panchakarma specialist in ayurvedic ayurvedic hospital mulshi we are working in a health sector at applied end we are all ayurvedic consultants working in a hospital and simultaneously we have a research team associated with us so that we are also doing research in ayurveda first of all i would like to thankful uh, to thank i rat and mibm institute for giving a chance to share my thoughts with you all when we are talking about science it is first step is to understand the science for this communication expression suggestion debate verification and then validation we have to go we have to follow this step after that application comes so today i am communicating for health in ayurvedic perspective to for the applied end how we can apply for better health let us start so discussing with health today in our day to day life we are discussing lot about health so that when we meet each other simply we question how are you so health has am i audible hello am i audible hello hello you so everything is okay so health discussion health point is we can't skip in any communication whenever we meet each other whenever we are going somewhere health has a huge hello am i audible yes ma'am it is audible 
I mean, you okay, can continue, sorry, sorry. ma'am. Yeah. Okay, okay, I will continue now. So, yeah. discussion about health is the commonest topic of our communication. Yeah. Starting from how how are you, what happened with it, or oh, something is going wrong with you. Uh, some day, someone has uh, this even newspaper gives lot information about health. So health is very important topic in our life. Are we really aware about health? Do we know what is health is? Or do we know what is real health? We do really know about health. The question, the answer to the question is no, we really don't know about health or what the health is, how health is achieved. And or more precisely, we are ignorant about health. Till we land some serious disease. Unless we got any label, someone has diagnosed with uh, hypertension or diabetes, then the person will be, oh, okay, I should start working, I should take healthy diet. Till then, it's okay. We are just ignoring. And this is the thing where we are lagging. And the persons, the people we, which are vigilant or serious about health, what do they do? They just go through investigation. They just investigate a lot of things, 20, 30, 40 investigations per year. They just measure the numbers. My hemoglobin is okay, sugar level is okay, cholesterol is okay, then okay, I'm fine. I'm fit. And unfortunately, many fitness institutes or many uh, uh, things or decisions are made on of these numbers, numericals. So, health is something beyond that. Otherwise, the person having nice cholesterol level, uh, working uh, in a good condition or uh, having all fitnesses will not be seriously ill. We come to some news like that a fit person or a gymmer or a marathon runner is died due to heart attack. How was this? Because fitness or health was ignored and the preferences or the importance was given to the uh, number. So today we will understand difference between or the details behind the numbers which we make it. So what is health? According to our World Health Organization, universally, accept, uh, universally uh, accepted organization which is working on the, in the health sector defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. And not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This absence of any disease doesn't make you are healthy. So the gist of the definition is seen in the next. What is that? Health is not merely absence of disease. If a person is disease-free, doesn't mean the person is healthy. Because disease-free condition may be, uh, may be in a window between the health and the disease. It can be. It is possible. And number of disease do change it. Muslim number of merely absence of disease. See, the person is not having hypertension, person, uh, blood pressure, person is not having diabetes, person uh, is not having fever, so and so and so. Something misses, something gets missed. And that is how many diseases we will negate. Instead, if we get some frame, so this, 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 this symptoms include health. And away from and that, physical health or disease will be better. 
Ayurveda is providing that supply. We will see later. First of all, health is not merely the absence of disease. Absence of disease is not health. Make it clear. Second point, it's not about physical, but mental and social factor. Physical, my body is okay, but I'm lazy, I'm ignorant, uh, I'm very uh, shy, I'm very uh, angry person, doesn't make I'm healthy. Also, by taking in consideration physical, mental and social, all the aspects should be, should be taken into the consideration. Third phase. It is a state. It means it is a state, it is a condition, it has a tendency to change. It is not in a fixed position. It needs, it changes. The person is healthy today, may not be healthy tomorrow. Because it is a state, it's a state, it has a tendency to change. What we have to do or what is our uh, aim should be, what should be the, our aim to maintain the state in equilibrium. We have to maintain the state of the health every day. Are we doing that? Nobody. Nobody of us are doing that. The fourth thing is the word complete. Complete absence of, uh, complete so well-being of physical, mental and social. Complete well-being makes it little more hypothetical. But it is necessary to stay healthy or for the definition of health. So this is more or a theoretical or a scientific terminology. Right at the end of application, we have to simplify it. Consider we are going for a long drive. We are going for a long drive about 1000 kilometers and so on. And we have to prefer a vehicle. How it would be? It would be nice looking. It would be comfortable. It should be uh, durable. It should have good everything. Every part of the vehicle should be in good condition like nut bolts and all spare parts should be tightly and nicely attached, well oiled, fuel is filled, and then we will use the vehicle. If we use the vehicle and if we can use this vehicle nicely, our journey becomes comfortable. We are thinking about a small journey. Okay? We think and we take into consideration not many things about a single journey. If we consider life as a journey of 70 to 80 years or 100 years, so what will be the vehicle? Obviously, our body will be the vehicle. Okay? So, how we should keep it for a good journey? So, our body, our mind, our senses, should be working in excellent condition and to work in the excellent condition we should be healthy or should follow healthy routine or a lifestyle. World Health Organization has said it is the right of a person to stay healthy. But I am also adding one thing, it is the duty of a person to stay healthy. Likewise, we take care of a small vehicle for a small journey. Are we really taking care of our body for this life journey? Are we eating good food every time uh, as a fuel? Are we cleansing our body? No. Are we maintaining it by exercising? Are we giving proper rest to that? 
no so we are not vigilant about the health state that is why many diseases many metabolic diseases are happening in a earlier age few years back diabetes hypertension was after 60 after 60 some 20% of the society was affected by diabetes or some metabolic disease but nowadays this is after 60 this age group has come to after 40 oh if you have crossed 40 you should go for a good health check up again weekly number so the overall health status of the society is declined we need to maintain it and we need to improve it. for that we should know what the health is keeping our vehicle nice in a nice condition and maintaining it is nothing but the health like we maintain our car like we clean our car we should take care of our body so we saw the contemporary sciences allopathic science and current uh, medical science is taking care of the health in investigation basis they tell you about body mind relation it tells about how the rest is important and all that and so that the what our science what ayurveda says about health i want to discuss with you all that what is ayur so first of all we need to know what is ayurveda ayurveda is an ancient indian science which tells the about life it is a science of life it tells about all aspects of the life and how one should use the all aspects of the life to grow at the same time it is a pro nature holistic science it ha it gives the principle uh, to adjust the body with the surrounding for healthy living and one more thing of all it describes health in detail and tools to achieve it it aims about it aim aim of the ayurveda is to maintain the health of the healthy person and to cure the disease but upper end is given to maintain the health healthy person should remain healthy and later and the second is cure the disease of the disease part. so lot if we take a society as a group two groups are there healthy and unhealthy it may be disease or floating in between these what we have to do is first we have to maintain the health of the healthy person and for that many practices many tools are given or are described in detail so we will uh, see what ayurvedic science or ayurveda science says about health it says samadosha samagnishta samadhatu malakriya prasannatma indriya manah swasthya itya vidhiyate again this is a uh, hypothetical definition or a theoretical definition which is for mainly uh, for the ayurvedic vaidya or students of ayurveda that when you are communicating when you are looking at the person or a uh, patient you should take those those, those things these things what are those again it says equilibrium it is a state it is a condition
condition it is a dynamic condition it is not a steady condition of dosha what are dosha dosha are the fundamental energies that carries body function again as i said previously it is a pro nature science it applies nature law to the body in nature we have moon we have sun and we have wind energy similarly they they carry many things on the earth similarly those energies doshas are those energies in the body which carries all the functions in the body uh, doshas are vata dosha pitta dosha kapha dosha vata dosha is similar to the wind in the environment it is responsible for the all type of movements in the body pitta dosha is the energy or uh, we can say chemicals which are necessary for the transmission of the food to the body part for metabolism basically for the metabolism and, and kapha dosha kapha dosha is um, the energy which is required to maintain the body of the strength of the body is kapha dosha if we have three energies in equilibrium the person may be healthy or it is a one part in the health second part is equilibrium of digestive fire digestive fire or the digestion elements digestive elements should be in the equilibrium for example uh, in the biology uh, the level of hcl hydrochloric acid should be good all the hormones related for uh, digestion like ghrelin leptin should be in a proper position and in a proper concentration these are everything we look at those or or everything digestive fire third part is all the systems should be in equilibrium all the systems should work in a good if with good efficiency in a good speed as well as all the tissues in the body should be appropriately present it should be in the equilibrium waste product should uh, thrown out of the body on a regular basis and there should be harmony in the body at the same time blissful state of soul mind and senses is necessary or it is an another part of the health everything is okay i don't have any problem in the physical body but if my mind senses are not working i am not healthy so ayurveda looks at the health far ago than uh, contemporary sciences as a unit of body mind and soul so every all the three is are working in a good condition the person will excel excel in life So this is health according to Ayurveda. It is what we can say a uh, basic conceptual understanding about health. So, but as a layman, how I can understand about samadosha, samagni, samadhatu? How how I can understand? I can't understand. So I should need something for as a um easy easy to understand or at the end of applied end how the science is looking at the health so science has already given some symptoms about health we check these symptoms and tell the person is in a healthy condition or in unhealthy condition okay. 
so we will go to science of health science of health includes first is proper nourishment properly nourished tissues indicates excellent functioning of all systems in the body if the function if the all systems in the body are functioning good your metabolism will be good your absorption will be good in turn your body tissues are in a good condition proper digestion metabolism will result well nourished body properly nourished body will have appropriate weight nice posture nice energy level and also properly nourished body will provide good immunity a nourished person felt sick very rarely or than other so proper nourishment is a good sign of health another point into consideration is nourished body or over nourished body is not a health so person is obese or very lean is not a health we have to make our body properly nourished second part is proper strength person should have good strength what is strength strength is capacity for exertion or exercise in ayurveda he said it as a balam balam vyayama shaktya parikshit how much exercise you can perform or how much exertion mental as well as physical you can bear in the body for bearing exertion and uh, uh, exercising we need healthy heart healthy tissues good properly functioning musculature good appetite third uh, i mean good appetite what is appetite appetite is hunger or desire to eat many people come at my come come at clinic and say bhook nahi lagti hai fir kya kabhi i am never hungry i am never hungry i just eat when the time comes One o'clock, I have to go for a lunch. Eight eight o'clock, I have to go for a dinner. Like that, it is not a sign of health. Following timetable without following diet time timetable without appetite is good. Not a good thing. What what should happen? Of course, every day, every time, we should get a good appetite. We should feel uh, hung. to eat feel to eat not craving for eating hmm? in uh, biology if we see hunger is induced by hormones ghrelin leptin cortisol thyroid are major hormone that regulates appetite if the hormones are in a good condition or they are present in a certain amount the hunger is induced eating food at the time of the appetite helps in good digestion in ayurveda it we see appetite is a sign of digestion of the previous meal and if we we should eat after good appetite so that the previous food is not present in the stomach present previous food is present in the stomach we don't know about the appetite or we don't if we don't take into consideration of appetite another meal came into the stomach every all the chemical uh, balance is destroyed so we need to eat when we are hungry and having good appetite every day or every time is a sign of health fourth point is good digestion in 
in ayurveda it is said that one should eat the food after digestion of previous one no mixing is allowed it creates lot of toxins which we call it as a ama and that ama creates many diseases so a person should have good digestion to stay healthy so how can i say that i have my digestion is good when we eat food first of all we should have desire to have food second is feeling of energetic energetic after ingestion of food after taking food we should feel energetic third no discomfort pain bloating after taking food easy bowel movement regular bowel movement a uh, regular interval of bowel movement like uh, uh, for stool two times in a day at morning and the, at evening or one times in a day on every morning wake up tolerance of all the types of food is a sign of good digestion good digestion is a result of sama agni digestive power is good that means all the chemicals are present in a good quantity and in a quality will give you good digestion good digestion power is needs to be achieved as a white bear half of the half of our patients are uh, cured if we improve digestion point is lightness in the body their body should we should feel the body is light not heavy heaviness when we get heavy if we are not rested properly if we uh, go for any change in the food like that lightness in the body indicates your stress hormones are in the better condition hmm? we should not feel heavy in the body after food after sleep after any condition so lightness in the body should needs to be present 90% of all are not experiencing this nothing happens some heaviness is there in the head some heaviness is in there in is there in the stomach something in the body it is not a sign of health so lightness should be present sixth and important thing is comfortable onset of sleep and waking up with the energy sleep should be comfortable sleep onset should be comfortable now if we uh, search in the on the internet 50% people are suffering from insomnia or some sleep disturbance or taking pills for sleep uh, induction so a healthy person will have comfortable onset of sleep at the same time after taking rest body will feel energetic mind will be fresh it is rest for body and mind in ayurveda it is one of the three pillars of the life it is a tripod uh, theory in ayurveda that uh, life depends on the three main parts uh, main support system uh, support system of the life first is food second is a uh, sleep properly taking sleep nourishes the body in gives strength increases life span and uh, waking for a late night sleeping in the day time sleeping after food creates 
very much disturbances at the level of dosha. So, com comfortable onset of sleep and waking up with good freshness needs to be achieved. With complete evacuation of waste products, feces, uh, uh, urine should and clutter should be passed at a regular interval without any uh, disturbance and without any unsatisfaction. It should be complete and after evacuation, we sh body should feel light. Eighth thing is glowing skin. Glowing skin. Skin is the mirror of the body. All the metabolic conditions are working in a proper way. Skin will glow. Glowing skin. Uh, many people have uh, pale, scaly skin, patchy skin and rest no any disturbance but uh, it is not the healthy condition healthy person or healthy body will have a glowing skin should have a glowing skin ninth is fresh and happy mind or cheerful mind is a sign of health So again, if we observe ourselves, we lack two to three signs. We need to achieve it. If we achieve all these things, we will live better life. Factors affecting the health. On which factor health is um, dependent? First is food. We all, as we all know, body is made with the food. In Ayurveda, not only body, but body and mind, both are nourished by food. If we are eating chapati and sabji, if someone gives us uh, fragmented pieces of chapati, uh, half cooked sabji without any taste, how how we feel to eat and what will be uh, the effect on digestion. Instead, if we get some nicely cooked food presented in a nice manner, all the uh, flavors are smelling nicely, what will, what our mind will feel, what we feel and what will be the effect of the digestion. So food has given much more importance and Ayurveda has stated lot of concepts regarding eating or about food. But uh, this is beyond the scope of the today's presentation. We will discuss this on some day later. But food carries 80 to 90 percent of the uh, factors. Second part is rest person should take rest at the time of night. Disturbance in that will lead to ill health. Exercise. Exercise is a, has the power to change many things. It increases metabolic rate. It helps to throw out the waste products in the uh, away from the body. It gives strength to the body. So exercise, regular exercise plays important role in maintaining the health. Fourth is of course atmosphere. Atmosphere gives uh, many of the our healthy conditions depends on, on the atmospheric changes as well. We have for to stay healthy, we have to adapt the changes according to atmosphere. As the season changes, we have to make some changes in our 
suppose i am using 5 uh, cups of tea with uh, ardra in the winter if summer comes and if i continue if i didn't change it i will not be healthy i won't stay healthy i have to change thank you ma'am for sharing your valuable time and for joining this webinar on the behalf of organization committee iraj webinar i would like to present a certificate of appreciation to you kindly accept it now i would like to thank all of his sponsor and coordinators i would also like to thank our president we will happy to hear your comments and compliments or suggestions at our facebook page and twitter page this video will be available shortly in our youtube channel kindly subscribe our official youtube channel iraj conference and seminars for all past and upcoming webinars and expert lectures thank you all see you in another webinar soon thank you professors for sharing your valuable time and for joining this webinar